Hello, my name is Rob Anderson, and I am the senior engineer here at Tomato. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install the Tomato MC3 gate into an industrial generator. Though it may sound specific, this is the installation method used on all non-vehicle installs for the MC3 gate. This particular application will require a MC3E, which utilizes an external mount antenna. The reason we use an MC3E is to ensure that the device has a clear view to the sky for GPS satellites. If you don't need to see how to install the antenna, click on the button below to skip right to the MC3 install. Before we begin, we must make sure that we have everything we need for this particular installation. We must have the antenna and we must have the MC3's three wire harness. Before you do anything with the antenna itself, you'll need to drill a hole in the top of the asset that you're installing the MC3 gate into. During the installation, the antenna must be able to get a GPS fix, acquire a cell signal, and get a clear view to the sky. We must first drill a pilot hole using a smaller diameter drill bit. After the pilot hole is drilled, we will use a unit bit to drill a 3 quarter inch hole. Once the hole is drilled, run the antenna cable through the hole so that the antenna itself rests outside. Next, take the cover off the 3M tape. The tape will ensure that the hole is sealed. Once the antenna is mounted, you will then place the nut mount onto the thread of the antenna. Once the antenna is mounted to the asset, we will now connect the antenna cable to the MC3. Now that we have properly installed the external antenna, we will now wire the MC3 three-wire harness. Make sure that you have everything you need to install the MC3. The parts that come in the box are the MC3 gate, an installation bag containing an install guide, VHB red tape, 3M Velcro tape, cable mounts, screw brackets, and alcohol wipe. The previous 2G device also used a three wire harness with the same color pinout as the MC3 three wire harness. So naturally we will want to connect the red with the red, black with the black, and the white with the white. When tapping into a previous installer's wiring, you will need to ensure that their connections are properly connected. When splicing into wires, we will use a pair of wire strippers to strip off a half inch of the wire insulation for both the MC3 three wire harness and the asset's source wire. Next, we will twist the two wires together, then cut off a quarter inch of the twisted wires. Now we will place a heat shrink butt connector on the twisted wire, then use a pair of wire crimpers to crimp the heat shrink butt connector. Be sure to check that the heat shrink butt connector is properly crimped and secure. After you have crimped your connection, we will now use a propane torch to seal the connection on the heat shrink butt connector. Now that we have properly wired the MC3 three wire harness to the asset, we can now plug it into the MC3. The MC3 will now go through a power on cell test. The test has four phases, which the status will be indicated by the LEDs. First, the red LED will turn on, indicating a boot up, and there is proper power to the MC3. Second, the amber light will start to blink, indicating that the MC3 is searching for a GPS signal fix. Once the light becomes solid, this will indicate that the device has a good GPS signal fix. Third, the green light will start to blink, indicating that the MC3 is searching for a cellular connection. Once the light becomes solid, this will indicate that the device has a good cellular connection. Fourth, the blue light will immediately become solid because this is a three-wire application, so we will not attempt to scan for a vehicle communication network. Now that the MC3 has completed the power on cell test, all LEDs will turn off. We will now turn the asset on to ensure proper operation. Once the asset is turned on, the red, amber, and green lights should turn on and remain solid. Once you have verified proper operation, turn off the asset, which will turn all lights off on the MC3. We will now fasten the tamper-resistant zip ties to the MC3 and the three-wire harness. This will ensure that the connection will always stay secure. Now we will securely mount the MC3 with the materials provided in the installation kit. For this application, I decided to use the 3M tape to mount it to the inside panel of the asset. I made sure to stay away from the exhaust, which is the hottest area of the asset. While using 3M adhesive tape, wipe the area clean with provided alcohol wipes and make sure that the surface is flat. 
Once the mounting area is clean, we will peel off the cover of the 3M tape and mount the MC3. Continue to place pressure on the MC3 for at least 10 seconds. Now that the MC3 is properly mounted, we will use zip ties to secure the harness wires and cables to keep the inside of the asset clean and organized.